we've talked about this before and it's time to bring it up again and uh, just maybe to speak on it in, in slightly more explicit terms. And, and that is this, this concept of, of not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, you see, every, every martial arts style, right? Style is not the right word. Their system, every martial arts system, every art uh, is built with certain assumptions, certain context in mind, right? And so there is the toolbox side and there's the training side. We've talked about all of this before. But the, the thing that I need to, to talk about here is this idea that uh, you, you're only able to train to what is actually available to you. Now, I, I have heard the, the argument many times before that, uh, you know, if, if you don't have good training near you, you should, you should go move as, you know, like move somewhere else and go to where the good training is. As if that is a possibility for the majority of people, it, when it's not. Um, there are a whole lot of reasons people can't just pick up their lives <clears throat> There are a whole lot of reasons people can't just pick up their lives and move for training. Uh, a lot of times that's family, jobs, things like that, right? If you are willing to be a familyless, friendless hobo, yeah, you know what? If you can get there, go do it, right? But that's not a reality for most people. Most people have a lot of reasons why they live where they live. Most people are not looking to become a full-time, uh, you know, uh, martial artist who lives in the sensei's back room or anything like that. That's just not reality for most people. So what we have to talk about is kind of being able to make do with what's available. You see, I'm a very firm believer in the fact that a good student can do a lot more with a bad teacher than a bad student can do with a good teacher. Um, and I'm not saying that you need to just disregard the quality of the teacher. That's not what I'm saying. You absolutely should be looking for a good teacher, but that's still gonna be contingent upon what's available to you. You, you just don't always have what's uh, you know, the best available to you at any given time and place. And the logistics of changing your time and place are much more difficult than people make it sound. So here's the thing, right? Let's say you have it in your mind, I want to learn this art, right? Let's say you specifically want to learn a style of martial arts or a, a specific system of martial arts, and it's just not available to you anywhere. Well, then let's peel it back one layer and say, what is this martial art trying to achieve? right? Is it a striking art? Is it a grappling art? Is it a self-defense art? Is it a sport art? We can go down the line. What is it categorically trying to do? What niche in the whole giant, you know, web of martial arts, what is it trying to do? Well, once you can kind of figure out kind of categorically where it sits, start looking around for other martial arts schools that instead of looking for that art or that style, start looking for other martial arts schools that teach in that category. Let's just pick striking. Let's pick kickboxing, right? Kickboxing is this giant, giant thing of, you know, uh, there's the karate style kickboxing, there's the Thai style kickboxing, there's kung fu style kickboxing, there's French kickboxing, right? There's a whole bunch of styles of kickboxing. So categorically, if you can find something that, let's say you really, really want to learn left way, but it's just not available, right? And you go, well, what's close to that? Well, kind of, you know, like all of the Thai, Cambodian, Laotian, you know, that Southeast Asian kind of stuff. Well, still not the most popular stuff. Maybe you can't find a school for that. You go, okay, let's go the bigger net of kickboxing. Let's at least get a foundation in some basic kickboxing, whatever that is. Let's say you end up in Taekwondo, right? Far cry, but Taekwondo is easy to find, right? There's a Taekwondo school in every corner. Now, there's a lot of low quality Taekwondo out there for sure. But you know what? 
you get in there, you learn it to the best of your ability. What do you do with that then? You have developed a little bit of physical competency, maybe not necessarily the ability to fight very well, but you've developed at least a little bit of physical competency that you can then springboard off of and supplement with seminars, books, videos, those kind of things. I don't think I've ever heard of a single high-level martial artist that doesn't supplement with books and videos. Um, you know, supplement is the key there, right? You don't want to build the foundation on that stuff because there's going to be a lot of uh, things that you miss on your own and there's going to be a lot of lack of consistency. So it is good to have the physical practice where you're at, the stuff that's available to you. But let me tell you what I did. When... Um, you know, when I was coming up at Wing Chun, uh, my Kung Fu brothers and I would get together on the weekends and we would train for multiple hours on the weekends. We would get in at least double the amount of training on the weekends as we did in class during the week because we wanted to get good. We were interested in doing the thing. When I lived in a town, and this is actually when I was competing in MMA, right? just amateur stuff, right? I've never gone pro. And I, I, I feel the need to mention that every time I bring it up, right? I was just a local amateur. That's it. But when I was competing, what did we do? We actually just put together a study group at the local college because that was what was available. There were no real martial arts schools around there. You know, none that we could find. There was another martial arts group that rented out space at the college. We just formed a study group, and here's the cool thing about being in a college town, and right, you might not live in a college town, but here's the cool thing about being in a college town. People come in from all over the country with different backgrounds, different experiences. Met jiu-jitsu guys, Muay Thai guys, uh, so many wrestlers and boxers. We all just put our heads together and kind of did this informal knowledge share thing. I would not have traded that for the world. It was some of the best training of my life because we just got in there and did the thing saying, hey, I know this and he knows that and let's just put it together and let's get the pads out and do some pad work and then let's get together and spar. And it was, it was some of the best training of my life because we were just young and, and, and eager. But here's the thing, all of us had something to offer. We didn't go in their blank slates. It would be very difficult to do that from a blank slate. And this is why I'm saying, right, even if what's available to you is not the best in the world or is not something you're particularly interested in, now look, don't do something you hate because you're not going to get out of a lot out of something that you hate. But even if you're not training the art that you want to train, right, you wanted to do Lethway, you got stuck with Taekwondo, you know what? Go and be the best Taekwondo guy that you can be. And then when you have the opportunity to go to a seminar, go to a seminar. When you have the opportunity to go uh, take an amateur fight, go take an amateur fight. When you have the opportunity to pick up a book or watch a video or do, do a course, do that. Because at least once you have that physical foundation of something, you can add to that. And that's what I'm getting out here with. So, you know, provided that you're doing stuff that's kind of categorically in the same ballpark, you can make do with that for a long time. And yeah, maybe that's not the way that you get up to be, you know, the best in the world at anything. But most people aren't trying to be the best in the world. They're just trying to improve themselves and have some fun and learn something cool. And for those people, that might be more than enough. And the fact is that if you try something that you weren't looking for, you still might fall in love with it. Just about every style that I have trained formally hasn't been something that I was looking for. It happens to be something that I just fell into and fell in love with. So don't be so quick to be like, no, I have to learn this one style because it's the best because so-and-so said so. Nah, that doesn't matter that much, right? Go to somewhere that can teach you the physical skills or at least the majority of the physical skills that you're looking for, even if it's not the style, the flavor, whatever that you want, and supplement, right? You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater just because you don't necessarily like the training method at a school or whatever, or, or just because you think that the school is lower quality doesn't mean you can't learn anything. So really all I'm asking you guys is just to be a little less quick to judgment, 
right? There's nothing wrong with being skeptical and critical. But isn't it better to do something that is close to what you're looking for than to do nothing because you don't have the perfect thing? Like, at least in my life, that's better. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm way off base and maybe you should only ever train with the best in the world and if they're not the best in the world, you should bury them six feet under. I don't know. So, I will talk to you guys later. Good journey. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, give the dog a bone. You can follow us on our other social media accounts. And if you really like it, you can head over to Amazon and buy a shirt. You can also go over to Gumroad and purchase some of our instructional courses. All of the links will be provided and also on our website. If you happen to be in the Phoenix area, we would love to meet you. Come drop in for a class, you know, even just to chat. And if you're looking for a new home, we would be happy to have you. So until next time, good journey.